Good morning and welcome to today's Be The Light Meditation. I'm Jan Jorgensen and the website is Sound and Light Healing Arts. I must have, <laughs> I must have said this a hundred times now, but I think it's important to uh, make a name stamp. Okay, if you're not saying, who is that person? I've seen her before, what's her name? How do I contact? So I picked a card today um, from my card deck, Be the Light Divine Alchemy cards. And here it is. Know thyself, reclaiming your potential. How interesting this picture looks like one of my sisters actually. Reclaiming your potential. Take a deep breath. Go back to a time when all was possible. Feel that excitement, passion, and expansion. Now go to the time of contraction. See and feel the expansion. Overcome the contraction with the bright light. Reweave your self story as empowered, strong, and courageous. Imagine winning, trying, and succeeding and finishing things. Hold this feeling. It is the real you. See and feel your halo of protection and light shining. And the affirmation is, I am the best, brightest version of myself, willing and inspired to do anything. When I say reclaiming your potential, I say this because you were born this malleable, beautiful little newborn who your parents could have used the best parenting practices, which they didn't know and their parents didn't know, but they could have made you feel completely safe and nourished you with food in a certain way that you grew trusting the world, trusting your environment and trusting people. But honestly, not many of us had that perfect situation. And many of us were from the get go, part of the abusive environment field, energetic field of what we call narcissism. And it's very popular now. And I constantly since what I learned about narcissism being selfish and self oriented and comes from an initial wounding, I constantly query in myself, was this a narcissistic action or thought? Because truly, this is the fungus, the mold, the low vibration in human social interactions that brings everything into the trauma, into the uh, sense of heaviness, and it's the opposite of realizing your potential. So how would that look like? It would be raised with a parent who said things like, are you sure you can do that? Or is that something uh, that was in your skill set? Or the varied ways that a narcissistic parent can truncate your confidence to the point where your courage is just melted. Why try? A narcissistic parent does not want their child to shine, does not want their child to have successes without the pain that they push to contract and marginalize, make wrong in a critical, shaming, misaligned way so they themselves feel bigger and more in control because that little tyrant that was born as a two three four five six year old they felt out of control and and had the reign of the energies of a narcissistic parent that's all they know and so often in a narcissistic environment the person with this pattern and qualities has no empathy, which means they 
can be abusive, but they can't see it because they can't be in the other's seat and imagine how you feel after their abuse. In fact, their abuse is normal, normalized. They feel it's normal, so they often will say things like, you're too sensitive, or you want the world to be perfect, or everything can't go your way. And they often will watch for any weak points in your emotional field, the things that you struggle with, and bring that back at any time where you're open and vulnerable, just to make sure that they are like a scorpion and they are stinging and neutralizing you to the point where you almost want to dissociate because you're wondering, are my feelings even normal? But we have progressed enough psychologically and socially to show the incidence of narcissism is now one out of four people. Why? Because there's a covert narcissism. And that's the person who's so wounded, but goes around, it's all about them and they very steadily come in under the radar uh, and hurt, dismiss, and again, uh, make wrong and shame, but it usually with coverts, it's the people that they say they love, though often they're not able to love, but those they rely on, the people that support them, which is usually a kind, empathic person who is bought in to the false promises, the love bombing, the sense of I met the love of my life. So I, I'm reading this more and more now on Facebook profiles and how else would we know something was expanding if people weren't really talking about it. And thousands of websites with professionals discussing the absolute mechanisms of narcissism and how it comes across. So honestly, a lot of us were raised with a lot of narcissistic parents and are just now discovering that that pattern is something that we don't want and don't like in ourselves. So it's, it's quite um, humbling to realize this intergenerational aspect of no fault whose fault is it that they couldn't see that their modus operandi was actually poison and toxic and was creating even more children adults children to adults uh, the reign of trauma and tyranny and domination continues and continues and continues well that's why i focus on the voice that's why I'm helping our little girls and little boy selves repattern from that initial shock and angst of, can I do things? Am I good enough? Do I have what it takes? Because if you've been in a relationship with a narcissist or have narcissistic parents, they go way out of their way. So, why would you choose a narcissistic relationship? Well, I already said, number one, it looks too good to be true, and maybe it is. There's a, a truly a love bombing phase. But also as light workers, it is important to know that we didn't come here just to live a perfect, hunky dory, family loving life. We had to learn to go through tight spaces to discern. Is this love? How did love go south? How did what happened in my reactions? How does that fit with my being a divine person? Until finally, you see the narcissistic story and pattern for what it is and rise above it. So the various people that have narcissistic qualities in my life, what I've learned to do is to see it not react not go numb because that's what they love narcissists love to sting you because then they have control over you and you feel bad and you start apologizing and what then you work harder to get their love and approval and boy don't they love that 
So instead of playing that game, what if you learned and studied, became wise to the human avoidance patterns of responsibility, goodness, and kindness, and look at it and see it and say, ah, that's that pattern. I'm not going to be caught in that spider's web, that sticky web. I'm going to take a breath and I'm going to see this person acting out in this way. And I'm going to be true to myself, hold myself respect and love, and then have the courage to stay calm. And when the tantrum is over to say, I'd like to talk to you about this specific behavior. Now prepare for retribution, prepare for the beat up of everything you've done wrong later. And that that's called word salad, everything but to go right down into that little two year old being told you screwed up again, you good for nothing. Okay, so know that this person that you're brave enough to say something to. And don't bother with narcissistic people out in the world who don't have direct overlay and consequences on your life for co-creation. Let, let people be who they are. But if this is a spouse, a partner, a child, or a parent, or a boss, someone who you have true life weaving in connections with, it is important for you to learn to rise above it and to hold your emotional field. And this is the bane of human existence, learning to manage and regulate our emotions. So if you're living with a tough narcissist, you're in the ring to really learn to play and learn the game of life and to be a master of your emotions. So nothing, that vibration of narcissism coming in and other people, you feel it, you sense it, and you disarm it with what? Love. You allow that person to feel as safe and as honored in their purity and divinity as much as possible. Attempt to ignore ignore those behaviors but when they come in and there is strong disrespect find your voice and say it with what with no shame no uh triggers now i'm going to get you but you might want to think about that when you do this this is the outcome ah light goes on in a narcissist's head that doesn't work. Hmm. Well, first of all, I'm going to beat that person up. I'm going to ghost them. I'm going to be, I'm going to go, go away. So I don't have to face them till they're over it till they're over telling me I did something. <laughs> Remember, they can't sit in your chair and feel the pain you caused them. But now you've caused them pain. So they are going to get you back. So be prepared for that. It's like a little kid who you stole the cookie and they'll say, well, you left it in the wrong place. It's your fault I stole that cookie. <laughs> uh, anyway, they're afraid of owning and being in the truth of it. So it's just amazing what humans will go to to avoid feeling, feeling those deep emotional feelings they felt as a child when there was no words to sort. So they went numb, they created avoidance mechanisms. So you only, you're only in charge of you. So you take a deep breath, there's a little narcissistic attack and you stay calm and you hold the field until it's a proper neutral calming down to state what you see that is what it has occurred and help the person see that that will not help their life move forward in a successful way. And they know it. And they're kind of almost glad someone's saying, you know, is, how's this working for you? That's what Dr. Phil will always say. 
how's this working for you? And they go, well, really not very well. And then you say, well, how could you have done things differently? And, you know, apologies are, are really nice. That's the hardest thing for a narcissist to apologize. Usually they'll do a cursory, you know, complimentary, here you go, you can have it, I'm sorry. But a too heartfelt one really acknowledges the feelings in the uh, abrupt invasive energy that that they brought in so let's work with ourselves on this and again what if we could go into the iCloud into the iCloud in other words not stay in the server where you're you know in the mix but to emotionally rise up and take a breath not dissociate i'm not saying don't feel your feelings i'm just saying choose to stay calm choose to stay balanced so you can choose the best words that have the highest probability of the best outcomes okay because after a while if you understand the narcissistic behaviors and there's programs out there there's daily mailings how to understand a narcissist because It'll take about a year for you to understand and really identify and be fully clear, especially on a covert narcissist, because they're under the radar, but they have all the same qualities as the grandiose, um, you know, almost manic, the world belongs to me, the really annoying ones. The covert ones are often uh, the head of institutions and they run it in dominating, tyrannical ways that Frankly, why am I spending time on this? Because if you're listening to this, you're a light worker and you're part of the solution. If this is a disease that affects 25% of the population, wouldn't it be good for light workers to see and understand and to disarm those behaviors with love? These people have never felt a trust with any human being in their entire life. And maybe you can be that person. Maybe you can turn that light on of, I see light in you. Whereas they've been playing it small in their own little demonized realm. So as hard as narcissists are to stay around, they're lovable too. And as I said, we all have narcissistic qualities. And when I see in myself, I'm just like, <laughs> all right. Well, the awareness is what's good. Why? So we can all reclaim our potential, become benevolent beings dedicated to the principles of creation, truth, beauty, love, and goodness, and move into a new realm. But we can't do it pretending that people are co-creators because their narcissistic qualities will come in and pull the rug out of any co-creation over and over and over again. So let's drop into a meditation and see uh, what spirit would like to bring for us to work personally and collectively on this very important topic, narcissism. Take a deep breath through the nose and out through the mouth. We ask and intend to set a sacred space. We reflect that I believe it was Narcissus, a being who looked at their reflection in the water and became so in love. That became the basis, that self-orientation towards all. But in fact, narcissism in relationship is much different. It's based on extreme fear. So fear is a vibration. We ask and intend that we work with fear all through our system now. Because truly, if you have narcissists in your life, you have a resonance within you that fears trusting yourself and that you bring in this fake trust in person they will test you over and over again and show you they are not trustworthy. 
And so you finally come back to yourself and you face yourself in the mirror and say, I tried to trust humanity outside of myself. And that the truest relationship for trust is with yourself and with the creator. And only from that relationship does goodness flow. Only from that relationship can true loving human relationships grow in a healthy, functional way. I can prove all this to you by showing you people's auric, vibrational profiles, vocal patterns, how you attract narcissistic people based on your frequencies. So again, you are seeking mastery over your emotions, which is dissipating fear. And that takes dropping into your pool of divinity. There is no fear within a vibrational field of divinity. So this is what we do every week on Wednesday morning at 9 a.m. Take a deep breath through the nose and out through the mouth. And as I mentioned, this golden core of your own divinity within your conscious heart, we are awakening our heart. Feel it begin to glow, to expand. This is the true you. The human behavior, narcissism, all that just dances around, kind of poking your heart. But we are allowing the love to flow through us from the Creator in such a grand volume that it dissipates fear. So fear will not be your attractant out into the world. And this love because of its magnificent ability to microphage like lymphocytic cells or little Pac-Man to actually digest fear. So you're not only releasing fear out of your own body, system, mind, and emotions, but you're contributing to the collective consciousness, love, which overrides fear in every encounter. Every encounter. Particle to particle. Love wins. So take a deep breath as we're preparing our body to receive more love. This cleansing bath of pure vibrational love from source now. We open our crown chakras. We see the glowing light. Almost as the dawn, the bright warmth of the sun. Imagine that creator source is formed in this huge sun-like feature that projects pure light. Streams, pure light and love. It is now coming down and being made available to you to first bathe your face. Feel this light of love warming and bathing your face. Take a deep breath and absorb it into your skin, your muscles, and let go of the tension. Let go of any fear. In this moment, you are absolutely safe. Let this come into your cheekbones, your skull, your neck, and your shoulders. And now into your spine. 
imagine that like a sponge all of these various tissues are absorbing and holding and integrating this intense pure vibration of love take a breath and let it come into your ribs all the tissues holding all of your ribs together and now your lungs your heart your back your entire neck you are fully absorbing you're fully embodying and you're holding joyfully this divine light let it come now down into your organs into your abdomen into your upper legs knees lower legs down to the bottom of your feet going through your upper arms elbows lower arms and fingers now allow every part of your physical body to be drenched in this divine light just observe as it streams and clears and flows and grabs onto every little grain of fear envelopes it pulverizes it alchemizes it into love we take a breath and we reflect that our journey with everyone has allowed us to come to a place to seek and fully understand our ability to shift our emotions into this high vibration profile no matter what is occurring no matter what is happening no matter what other people say or do we take a breath our emotions are always regulated and we discern what is the highest best action in this moment to understand other people in their actions and to disallow their boundary violations so that they may begin the process as a toddler learning self-discipline and love as you are a model of an adult and in this way you can witness this person not allowing them to continue to poke at your boundaries to be verbally abusive to act in ways that are toxic and non-social and in this way you are a teacher the great mother of natural consequences and in this way you will trust because you are emotionally regulated that the words and stories and images that come to you to assist and support and inspire the narcissistic person to heal and grow and become the potential the potential of their god-given divine self By going through this process yourself, what better way than to heal the world? Because the world will only be healed through people. Be a model. Healing ourselves 
is the most important first step. Let this energy continue to work through your body profoundly, deeply, until you feel a sense of order, synchronicity, cohesion, cohesion, cohesionicity, that's not a word, <laughs> and just relax. We ask and intend that these energies become integrated and organized and stabilized within all of our fields now, our physical body, our mental body, our emotional body. And of course, all of this is regulated by our awake to the moment spiritual body. Nice deep breath. Let's finish this meditation by putting a beautiful golden resilient egg around our energy field. Nothing can penetrate our bubble of the energetic field that we choose to hold, one that is beneficial for us. Hold it. Golden resilient egg. Everything bounces off. So we are finished with today's meditation and message on narcissism. And my name is Jan Jorgensen, and I am here at Be The Light Meditations every Wednesday morning at 9 a.m., always free Pacific time. I do work with communities and circles. I love to do podcasts, and I also do some private sessions. And so you could find out how to reach me by looking at the website, soundandlighthealingarts.com. Thank you.